Hello, and welcome to this lecture about your research proposal. I'll go over the purpose of a research proposal and the components I expect from you. I'll also cover the bibliography in depth and point you at examples, instructions, and guides. A research proposal does a number of things. First and foremost, it allows you to articulate what your research project will be about in a manageable form. It's longer than your elevator speech that condenses all of your ideas into 30 seconds, but it's substantially shorter than the paper itself. Because you submit that proposal to me, it allows me to understand your research more thoroughly than I, and so that I can provide feedback. If you are able to pursue a career that includes scholarly writing, knowing how to write a proposal will help you achieve your publication goals. Proposals also benefit you by putting you on track and keeping you there. When you articulate your research, you commit to a particular path and discard other paths. It is, in fact, a preliminary plan about your research paper that you will maneuver yourself into following more or less. This does not mean you are stuck doing exactly what you say you will do in your proposal. Holding you to that is unreasonable because you produce the proposal before you complete the paper. This means you're writing about what you hope to accomplish rather than describing what you already have accomplished. So your paper is not likely to hew closely to your proposal, but the proposal sets you on a course. Let's talk now a bit about assumptions that underlay your proposal. These are things that you have to do to write your proposal. The first is that you've conducted preliminary research. Some of the steps we've already taken in this course should have provided you with enough background information that you understand the multiple directions your research could take. We also assume you've narrowed your topic to themes from which you have distilled at least one research question. Furthermore, you should have thought about the question and begun with more research to formulate an answer that you'll express as a claim. Finally, we assume you can answer the so what question and express the significance of your claim or at least what you think your claim will be. Answering the significance question, that so what question, leads you to connect your research to that of other historians as you tell your readers what meaning your conclusions have and why they should care about them. Your proposal has a number of components that we want to list and discuss now. The instructions and the worksheet I provide you will reiterate these fields. The first field is important. It's your name. Put your name on your work so I know with whom I'm dealing. Next, create a working title. By working title, we mean one that you use in the preliminary stages of the research. I find it most beneficial to come up with a title that keeps me focused on the goal of the project. This might sound like the subtitle of a large work, but it will signal what you hope to accomplish. For example, the proposal example I supply has the working title, quote, the education and influence of early Mesopotamian scribes, unquote. This tells us all exactly what the author was going to examine. And it becomes something of a motto, you might say, for the author's project. Said another way, it explains what's about to happen. The next field is for you to state your research question or your hypothesis, that is your tentative claim. Either or is fine, but don't include both. Like the working title, articulating your question or claim keeps you focused and on track, though in a slightly different way. After that, you should supply an abstract. An abstract is a paragraph or two, total of 150, maybe 250 words, that does a number of things. It repeats your question or hypothesis. That is, the abstract should be freestanding and should not rely on fields you've already completed to make sense. 
you don't have to restate your question verbatim, but you do have to include it somehow. Then you succinctly describe the direction your paper will take, that is, your assertions and evidence. This is not an elaboration of your argument, but an overview and a summary of it. In addition, you should present your tentative conclusions. Your abstract should also address how your research fits into the historic literature of your topic, which it can do in a phrase, clause, or sentence or two. It addresses your researcher's importance to your audience, and in doing so, identifies your audience and why they might be interested in what you have to say. There's one more component that I want to address, and it is distinct enough that we'll do it separately. And that's the bibliography. A bibliography is a list of sources you consulted and in your final paper, those you cited in your footnotes, arranged alphabetically by authors' last names. All style manuals make provisions for sources without authors. Consequently, you should format your bibliographic entries correctly according to the style sheet we use in this class, Turabian's Manual of Style that comes from the Chicago Manual of Style. You should be familiar with Turabian. Though your English teachers have taught you the wannabe style sheet of the MLA, and your social science teachers have forced the APA on you. But historians use Turabian Chicago notes bibliography style for footnote citations and bibliographic entries. Though Turabian Chicago allows for author date style, do not use it in history class. Other lectures deal with the details of citations. But be aware that you must cite your sources in an alphabetical list at the end of the proposal formatted according to Turabian's note bibliography style. Besides citation style, there are a few other caveats about your proposal's sources. You must have a minimum of five, and they have to be competent and collegiate. You can use tertiary or reference sources in your paper, and if you do, you must cite them, but they do not count toward the minimum required number of sources. At this point in your research, I suggest you consult secondary source monographs, books and articles that offer an interpretation of your topic or that touch on your topic. I also require you to restrict your inclusion of true websites to one out of four. This means if you include five to seven sources, only one of them can be a true website. To include two true websites, you'll have to increase your bibliography to at least eight total sources. By true website, I do not mean edited and vetted sources delivered digitally. Do not count databases like JSTOR or online publications that go through the peer review process as websites. Rather, websites are things anyone can put up without submitting their information to any kind of control. They might be old school websites of information or blogs or podcasts. The point isn't how they deliver their information but the vetting that information receives before it sees the light of day. If you're not sure, drop me a line with a link and I'll take a look with you. Writing proposals isn't as difficult as it seems, but it's not something you intuitively know how to do. Well, at least most of us don't know how to do it without practice and instruction. Our class Canvas site provides you with examples of a proposal, as well as multiple abstracts of finished articles, a set of instructions, and some guides that will make your life a little less difficult. It also has a worksheet that I want you to use. I suggest you open the site and search out the module having to do with your research proposal. If you're watching this lecture from our Class Canvas shell, you're already there. Alternately, you can find the examples, instructions, and guides in the research proposal assignment area of our Canvas shell. I try to build in redundancy 
to make it easier for you to access the info you need. Another place to check for the instructions is in your syllabus. The hard copy has the instructions incorporated and the copy offered on the Canvas shell includes the instructions as an attachment. Finally, let me direct you to guides that will help you format your bibliography. You can consult the Chicago Manual of Style online provided by the Troy Library and accessible from its list of databases. Use the Notes Bibliography section rather than the Author Date section. You can find the same information in your textbook, Turabian's Manual for Writers, in chapters 15, 16, and 17. Remember to use the Notes Bibliographic form rather than the Author Date form. To summarize, your proposal exists to tell yourself and me what you plan to write about and how you plan to go about that. A proposal is a preliminary articulation of your plan with a number of fields, the most important of which are the abstract and the bibliography. The abstract is a statement of your intended argument that also explains your suspected findings, how your argument fits into the historiography of your topic, and why and to whom your paper might be interesting. The bibliography is a formal list of sources you have used or will use in your paper. Finally, I've tried to not leave you in the lurch, so I've provided an example of a proposal written by a former student, a few abstracts from published articles, and the exercise worksheet I want you to use along with instructions. All of these are available in the class Canvas module about your proposal and under the proposal assignment itself. With this, we end the lecture. As always, thanks for your attention.